Warning, this article contains spoilers for The Handmaid's Tale Season 2, Episode 1 June. The title of the episode and the name of our eponymous handmaid heroine. The Season 2 premiere of Hulu's The Handmaids. Tale was a visceral punch in the gut that wasted no time jumping straight back into the action. The glimmer of hope offered. In the season 1 finale as Alfred slash June, played by Elizabeth Moss, is placed in the back of a van. As Nick, Max Mangella, whispered a reassuring trust me is quickly dashed when it is revealed that the handmaid's defiance. In not stoning Janine, Madeline Brewer, will certainly not go unpunished. There are no words for the first several minutes. But they are not needed with Moss conveying such a complex range of emotion with just her eyes and her realization that this is not a rescue party from Nick. Is heartbreaking to watch. June and the other woman are roughly dragged from the vans. Muzzles crudely strapped on their faces as they are herded into the decaying Fenway Park in Boston, which probably holds. Happy memories for many of the women. Where is Fenway Park in The Handmaid's Tale? The punishment is brutal, panic ensues as the women are confronted with two huge gallows. With a noose for each of them. The confusion and terror is palpable. They are all able bod, fertile women. Surely Gilead will not them while their ovaries are still working? Moss delivers an acutely powerful performance. Which is even more impressive considering her face was covered by a muzzle for the beginning of the episode. Her panicked eyes search for her salvation. A sign. Anybody? Then the resignation that this is the end washes over them all before the lever is pulled and nothing happens. A mock execution. Then comes Aunt Lydia, and Dowd, with her pious speech on the importance of Auburn's. Does she ever consider that this sort of terror and stress might be affecting their chances of conceiving? Why did Orfrid cut her ear in The Handmaid's Tale? The scenes are some of the most difficult to watch of any show on television. Unpleasant and painful but incredibly gripping. The Handmaid's Tale is a show that one doesn't enjoy per se. But it is deeply moving. Particularly for women, the show offers an insight into a little worst nightmare. June aptly sums up the ordeal with Our Father Who Art in Heaven. What the actual F? What the actual F is right. How to watch The Handmaid's Tale Season 2 in the UK yet more torture is doled out to the women as they are forced to kneel in the rain. Holding rocks in their outstretched hands while Lydia sporadically shocks them with her trusty cattle prod. A brief reprise for June her when Lydia finds out she's pregnant. Maybe she will be treated with some kindness or even get some basic human rights. But sadly no. Dot her lack of autonomy is now heightened as she is reduced to a mere incubator. A vessel who they will not hesitate to chain up for nine months until the birth. Dot Aunt Lydia's act doesn't even let up when she's alone. The woman is so invested in her own delusion and mad with power. Dot another torture scene unsure as off Robert's Nana Eerie hand is handcuffed to a gas hob and the flames turned on. Dot the Handmaid's Tale Season 1 recap the act itself is not shown but her screams and the expressions from the women waiting are chilling. A hospital scene shows June waiting for an ultrasound and as Serena Joy, Yvonne Strahovski, warns her she wants no more of her smart girl carry on. Then as soon as the fetus shows up on the scan she's suddenly overcome with gratitude for her surrogate she kisses her on the head. Bless you, she gushes. Dot lying there with her legs in the stirrups, being violated yet again. Shows June at her most isolated. Dot who is in the cast of The Handmaid's Tale? It is interesting that in a show about the oppression of women, 
the biggest villains are in fact, women. Strahovski and Dowd's chilling portrayals of women so sure in their beliefs and so hypocritical in their sadism are maddening to watch but they do an excellent job. The episode is punctuated with flashbacks of June being berated for sending her child to school with a fever. Hinting at the changing world that led to the formation of Gilead. These moments are subtly terrifying because they chart the decline of respect for women in society as simply being a woman starts to become laden with a huge burden of guilt. Guilt for being a working mother in June's case. We also learn that June needs her husband's permission to collect her contraceptive pill, something which is eerily echoed in real life. For instance, in Ireland, where abortion is illegal. Where is the Handmaid's Tale filmed? The country is set to hold a referendum to repeal the law in a month's time, but the law itself, which has resulted in the deaths of several women, is still in place today due to deeply entrenched Catholic beliefs. The Eighth Amendment of the Irish Constitution equates the life of the fetus as equal to that of the mother. There's some serious skillied undertones there. This is why the handmaids tale is so effective at confronting women with a terrifying look at what life could be like if all their human rights are stripped away. A hopeful ending to the episodes sets the season up nicely. June's bid for freedom is an edge of the seat. Pain in the belly watch and her final scenes convey such raw emotion. The burning of her red cloak is hugely symbolic and the way she doesn't hesitate to cut her hair off brings a tear to the eye to an otherwise oppressive hour of television. In another act of defiance, June takes scissors to her ear and stoically cuts off the GPS tag that was stapled there in season 1. The cringe inducing process takes her a few goes in one of the show's goriest scenes to date. The resulting image of the now free woman covered in blood is powerful, the red of her cloak is replaced with the red of her blood. Beautifully subverting the shift in power. The Handmaid's Tale sees